Hello, my friends. Hello. Hello. Hi. What's up? What's going on? Uh, Make Your Be Podcast, episode 23? 24? 23, I think. I'm B. I make things. Uh, and this is my podcast. I'm feeling very sleepy, cozy with this time change. I'm not good with the time change at all. Who is, right? Uh, if you're from somewhere else in the world, we have fall back here, which basically means that in the 1800s, the time shifted back to give farmers more time to harvest in the morning. Uh, but alas, it is now 2023 and farmers have technology that they don't need to fall back. But we still do this thing where the clock changes, the time zone changes itself once in a while. So it's kind of annoying. But here we are. It is an hour later every day and it basically means that instead of setting at 5.30, the sun sets at 4.30 now. And it's so chilly. Oh, sorry, Elton clawed me because he wants attention. Buddy, please stop. Uh, so anyways, yeah. Come on up. If you want to come up, come up. Little cat, come to me. All right. This mistake. Oh, buddy. <laughs> That's enough. Uh-oh. Censor the butt. Every time I podcast, he needs to be the center of attention. Because your attention is elsewhere, I have to cause problems. It's for too long. Move your bum. Come on. Oh. <laughs> Elton. Hey. 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 Get down. Come on. Come on, buddy. Move your butt. Let's go. Down you get. Down you get. Oh, oh okay. Whew. Now I'm covering cat hair, and I'm going to sneeze probably a few times, and that's okay. And we're back. Hello. I don't know how long that was when I edit all this out, but that was about 10 minutes in real time. So he's a demanding little, little guy. And anyways, we're back. I'm B. Hello. And I can't remember what I've said to you so far because it's been so long. But I've been pretty good. I've been slow. I've been sleepy and honestly a little cranky with the time change for sure. I'm not a perfect person. Uh, yeah, it's just like it's a slow, slow time of the year, you know? It's time to slow down, time to be quiet and enjoy ourselves and kind of be home for a while. Today I'm wearing a knit that I did not knit. Uh, my aunt made this about 25 years ago. Not 25, like 22. Uh, I was alive. No, I wasn't. I was not alive when this was born, but this was made. But this is not made by me. This was my mother's that I stole from her when I started knitting because I didn't think she appreciated it enough. And so I said, that's mine now, actually. It's not yours anymore. So I'm wearing that. And I'm wearing really cool pants and can't see them. That's okay. But yeah, I've been making so much. I think since going to Rhinebeck, coming back, I feel very inspired by my friends and by everyone I met there. Uh, if you met me at Rhinebeck and said hello, thank you very, very much for saying hi. It was like really cool to meet people. I get uh, recognized for my shop in the city a lot. And it's kind of like, like, hey, who I know you because I buy things from you. And it's kind of weird to me because I'm like, oh, there's like a... Not a power dynamic, but it's like we're not in the same community, maybe. But when people are like, I recognize you because you're Maker Bee. I'm like, I oh, guess because you two make things and together we know each other. And that's really nice. It's nice to have like a common thread with people. No pun intended. Maybe a little pun intended. I don't know. I don't know. A little pun. A little pun intended there. So, yes, I've been making so much and I feel very inspired. Uh, I haven't cast on anything special recently. I've finished a lot of things, though, so we can talk about that. I haven't cast on anything wild because I am forcing myself to finish some whips that I have before I cast on anything wild. Uh, my friends are doing an Aurora Cap and Shawl make along, and so I'm going to join them and do that when I get my shit together. Uh, yeah, I think I'm talking very, I'm talking very calmly and much slower than I usually talk. So maybe you can finally understand me this episode. We'll we'll see. I also changed the lighting again. I am tired of complaints with the lighting. I I simply cannot handle it. This is it. This is the lighting final form for now at least. Uh, 
I think it's a cool light. It's all good. I have a new lamp. That's why, that's why the lighting is different. Uh, it got dark and Zoe and I went to Ikea and spent $200 on lamps so we wouldn't have to do with, like overhead lighting at all. All winter long, you know? Okay, so I don't really have a lot of acquisitions because why would I be buying many things since I went to Rhinebeck recently? That would be wild. I think my, my resources are depleted from buying things. But I did buy one thing on the road when I was delayed that it came in the mail before I cut myself off from spending money. Uh, and I bought myself some Crux Fibers uh, fiber. This is Dorset, I believe. Yeah, it's Dorset. And yeah, everything died by Brittany and all of the wool is sourced from Shepherds in Langley, BC. Uh, I used to play soccer in Langley when I was a kid. <laughs> I have like such a clear memory of going to our computer like our family computer and going to Google Maps and like typing up the address where the soccer field was and printing out the like directions to get to the soccer field in Langley. It was like a very long drive from our house. So there's a big fly here. Huge fly in the house. Very weird. So I, I would have to like go to the computer and print off the you know, the the directions. And I have to like sit in the passenger seat and like read them to my mom while I got my cleats on and stuff on the way to Langley. So then anyways, I have a connection to Langley. Uh, and I definitely seen sheeps on the way, but I love how the colors blend together. I haven't spun Dorset or like Dorset um, that I've known of. Maybe I have, and I just don't know. But the fiber feels quite soft. There's like a very nice halo around it. The blue one might be my favorite one. They look like candy, don't they? So I have about 200 grams of this. And I really want to make the hood pattern that's in Kiyomi and Sachiko Bergen's Moon and Turtle from Pom Pom Magazine. Rest in peace, Pom Pom. You'll be missed with this, but I don't think I have enough um, grams to do that. So I'm trying to think of a plan to spin these with something else so that I can extend their color profile and make myself a fancy, a fancy little, little really cozy hood situation. So yeah, that's what I bought. Something else that comes to me in the mail that I did not purchase explicitly recently is the Ply Magazine from this quarter. It's about drape and I'm excited to read that, but I don't have that to show you, I don't think. I, I, I don't know where it is, so I simply cannot show you. So yeah, not many acquisitions as of right now. In terms of work in, works in progress, I am in the process of making my girlfriend Zoe uh, a boo box. Well, not sorry, not a boo box. It's a variation of a boo box called a burr box. A boo box is something typically that a boyfriend makes for a girlfriend to celebrate Halloween, I believe. Uh, so like things like candles, cozy things, like getting into the cozy season, uh, kind of like a little gift box that's like made by hand. And so we're past the spooky season now. It is now November, so now it's a burr box. Uh, and so I'm making her some things to go in her burr box. She gets really down with the, the change of seasons. So we are trying to keep the depression at bay. <laughs> We're trying to make some cozy memories in this November. So for that, I've got things like I got a little face mask. I got like a nice body lotion, some fun treats. What else? Um, some holiday cookie like recipe magazines, a mini puzzle. Yes, and that's everything so far. I think I also want to pick up a candle and then I'll be complete with that. That'll be a good... Oh, and some chocolate, obviously. So yes, and on top of the things that I'm knitting. So I'm, <laughs> I'm also making things for her for this box. The first thing that I'm making for her for the, the burr box, um, I'm making some thick marled socks to keep her feet warm. Very important. Um, this initially started out as the Thanksgiving sock pattern from Summer Lee Knits, but it has an afterthought heel. And for me, an afterthought heel is not a good fit. It does not fit well. So anyways, we are working. I, I went, I went rogue and I just made a heel flap and gusset just kind of based on energy and thoughts and feelings alone. There was no precise measurements here. There was no anything precise, but it's fun to use 
you know, make a scrappy sock. And Marley makes everything better, right? Like, this is all yarn that I just, like, felt very meh about. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that's cool. It looks great. So cheers to Marley for the, for the socks. Uh, I'm done one sock. The other one has a little bit of work. They are thick. I always think anything that isn't, like, the thinnest possible fingering weight gauge is going to work up so quickly. But it does take time. This is the second one. We're getting there. Just purples and greens. Uh, and I chose those colors because when I was at Woolen Folk, I picked up a really special skein of yarn to make her a replacement hat because she lost the hat that I knit her when we were in Montreal. Do not get mad at her for that. She has already beaten herself up enough about it. Uh, <laughs> but so I picked up this lovely Ramboulet dyed in the wool skein from Supernova Fibers, I believe they're called. Uh, it's such a lovely plush. Uh, it feels lovely. Like, it's just so, so squishy and knit up. It feels like a dream. Uh, Rambouillet is my favorite yarn. I just immediately just went to the start knitting on this. That's so funny. Uh, it's so fun to knit. It's so nice. So, yes, I picked out this, and so I picked out colors to kind of match these. So she has matching hat and socks for cozy season. So she's nice and cozy. Oh, the hat that I'm making is, once again, just kind of like a, I picked out the gauge I wanted and when she wanted just a basic ribbed hat. So I picked out the gauge I wanted and just like went on Ravelry, Ravelry and tried to find vaguely something that I wanted to make the stitch count that other designers had figured out for that. Uh... Yeah, and I, it's kind of based on energy, how many things I cast on. But I do think, actually, it ended up being the same stitch count as the Best Beanie. It's a different um, size needle. So if you're looking for a good ribbed hat, I always recommend the Best Beanie. But this was just like a little bit heavier of a weight than, than what I've used for a Best Beanie in the past. So I used a bigger needle size. But the stitch count's the same. So I don't know if that math is mathing. But knit up, it looks quite lovely. Isn't that nice? Oh, and I have my Super Glow for my Super Glow Advent last year. This is a, a little stitch marker from Super Glow Fibers. Aren't they sweet? Nice and glittery. Very of the season, you know? Big time of the season. It's pretty good. So yeah, that's the burr box. If you have any ideas uh, about what I should add to the burr box, please leave them down below. So it does not watch this channel, does not interact with it at all. So if you want to give me a suggestion of what you would like to receive in a burr box that someone else makes you. I would love suggestions because I'm trying to make this really nice, you know, like really, really nice for her. So yeah. Uh, I have two spinning whips on the go right now. The first one is just this. You've seen it before. If you watch the channel, this is some Parandale that I picked up when I was in Bellingham in this summer, in the early summer, so May. Uh, I've been spinning this on this drop spindle forever. It kind of went to the wayside when I got my spinning wheel. I kind of said, spinning wheel forever, baby. But sometimes you gotta get back to that acoustic, that acoustic goodness, you know? Uh, I have such a tendency to, I'm sure we all do, right? We're, we're in this time where everything has to be fast and what can you produce and what can you post? And everyone else has talked about this so many times, much more eloquently than I ever will. The tendency to gravitate towards the fastest option, the prettiest option, the fanciest option. It's there for me as I'm sure it is there for you. Uh, but working on my drop spindle, even though I have fancier, newer spindles and also a spinning wheel, is a nice reminder that I like the process a whole lot. And pretending I don't is nonsense. The process is fun and I will continue to do the process. And just, like, enjoying my hobbies, you know? This is my hobby. Imagine, like, going up to a stranger and be like, this is my hobby. Do you think that anyone in the general population would know what this is? I think it'd be really fun. You know those, like, Jimmy Kimmel on the streets, like, blah, 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 like, street interview things where they're like, hey, stranger, do you know your wife's birthday? And the guy's like, oh, uh, no, I don't, like that. But I, I want to go to people in public and be like, hey, do you know what this is? Ever heard of this? you know what that is? Uh, what kind of fiber is this? You know, that'd be fun. 
scare strangers on the street. Sounds good. I'll do it. Sounds great. Uh, so yeah, Perrindale. Uh, there's no colorway for this. It was very much like a farmer. Farm to sheep. Sheep to sheep to needles situation. I'm about three-fourths of the way there. And you can see right behind me right there. Right there is the shawl I'm making with it. Slowly but surely. Zoe has a matching one. I'm talking a lot about my girlfriend in this. Sorry, I'm in love. Well, what can you do? I've been together for three years. You gotta keep the flame alive. You know what I'm saying? That was my... Yeah. I don't know what that was. Sorry. <laughs> the other uh, spin situation I got going on is this little Turkish spindle from my friend Natasha that I am working on. Wow, isn't she cute? Uh, the fiber is from dyed for you and the U is spelled E-W-E and that classic joke all fiber enthusiasts love to pedal. We love the dyed for you. Ah, you? Like a, like a sheep? Yeah, once again, what's that voice? I'm putting that away. I'm putting that voice away. Uh, <laughs> I'm spinning this one really thin. I don't know why, but I tend to spin things incredibly thin for no reason. But that's my thin spin. Not a pretty, not a pretty uh, turtle like the rest of them, but I'm enjoying a Turkish spindle a lot. It's quite slow, but it spins so pretty and I love the turtles. I think I'm going to try to do ply on the fly with a chain ply. We'll see how that goes. But yeah, that's what, that's my spinning whips right now. I have nothing on my wheel. Yeah, nothing on my wheel right now. It's I cleared it off because I I did some spinning previously. I'll show that to you in a, in a minute or two. Other works in progress I have. Oh my god, this one's fun. I'm bending down because it's on the floor. Because it's my shoe. Uh, <laughs> this is these are my slippers. I wear glare ups. I have worn glare ups for a long time. You might be like, be it's black. Yes. I don't wear black. <laughs> so we are felting. Just like doing some fun little felting designs. I'm gonna hide my face so it, it Yeah, there we go. It's very calming. I just take this pencil roving and kind of go as I want and just stab, 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 stab. I've never felt anything before. I just hated the black slipper. I need to do something different. I need a different I need something something new. A non black slipper, if you will. And I wasn't going to go buy one because these are perfectly good. So I just, I'm just going to felt on top and make something fun. But it's going well. And I really love how it turned out. This is pencil roving, pencil roving that I got when I was in uh, at Warm Folk once again. And from Lily Loop Studio. I loved her stuff. She had really fun colors of Unspun. You can see them right here. Purple, pink. I gotta see everything that I have. Otherwise I won't make anything with it. You know? So that's that whip. And the last whip I have to show you is one of my Finish It Fall projects. I am making a Beads of Joy top from James and Watts. This is the back panel, which I finished in May of last year. Uh, you might say, B, why do you, why is it the back panel? This is a reversible top. Because I took, let's use the word liberties. I took plenty of liberties with this back panel. The stitch counts, the increases and decreases. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure what's going on here. I can't vouch for this, okay? But I'm certainly not going to redo it. Because to the untrained eye, it looks great, doesn't it? I'm using Spin Cycle. The colorway is, what's the colorway? Let's find out. Stay tuned. Let's find out what that colorway is. I know the skein's kicking around here somewhere. I might be lying. I believe it's not Big Sky. It's Ranunculus. That's the colorway. It's Ranunculus. Yeah, so this is Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool. It's the sport weight. Yeah, it's, and it's been fun. For sure. It's a really fun pattern. I'm not sure why I put it down. I was really close to finishing. I think what happened was it got too warm too quickly and I just didn't have the the oomph to push through the, the heat. And so I have cast on the second panel 
and we are, I believe, on three of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine segments. So I'm on the third of nine segments. These colors are awesome. It's a, uh, it's really fun to use a color changing yarn. Controversial, I know, but yes. Anyways, that's that. Uh, I'm really enjoying that pattern. I was in a really big James and Watts phase for a sec. Uh, I just feel like their patterns just enjoyable. It's a good time, you know. Hard to deny the James and Watts. I believe those are all my whips. Okay, sorry, I had lunch. Now we're back. <laughs> uh, we are losing light fast, and so I must speak to you quickly. It is 3.30, which means we're losing light fast. Is that not depressing as all get out? I think it is. I think it's really sad. But I'm not thinking about it. I'm not thinking about it. We're moving on. We're adults. We're all, adult. We're all adults here. Uh, I'm so sorry. How rude. I have such a juicy selection of finished objects to show you today. I'm not sure where to start. I think everyone vote in the comment. I'm joking, obviously. This is not anything special. What do we want to see first? Do we want to see the hat? Do we want to see the finished partner pullover that took me 60 hours of work? Everyone clap the loudest for what you want to see. I don't know why I'm making these jokes. I'm sorry, we're done now. I'll just show you what I have. So, finish it fall. I, that's something I made up for myself. It sounds good. I've been trying to finish long standing whips. There was four the big ones that I had to do. One of them I have given up on. It is the Henley pattern from Ozetta that I was like stoked on. I think it's boring. I also have just been doing too much stock in it. I believe and that's the problem. So I'm gonna just like put that, let that rot basically. That's time I've spent, I won't get it back, whatever. Second is my Crux cardigan. I have not touched that since I did my fall video. It's staring at me. Whenever I make eye contact with it, I feel very, very embarrassed. So there's that as well. I will finish it eventually. I will finish it by my next podcast episode, okay? Eyes, look me in my eyes. I don't know why I did that. I'm, and now I'm fed, I have a lot more energy, I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm gonna stop being, I'm gonna be normal. I am going to finish that Crux cardigan if it's the last thing I ever fucking do. I'm gonna finish that thing, it's gonna be finished next episode. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna wear it. I'm gonna wear it next episode, I'm gonna say, I finished my Crux cardigan, you're all welcome. I know everyone's very worried about that. So actually, the last two things that I had to finish, I did actually finish. The, actually there's five things. The fifth thing is my Totally Tank. I am missing yarn for that that I'll have to pick up when I'm in BC this year. So I'm just gonna save that. I'll do a trip down to Bellingham and I'll stop by Spin Cycle and pick up what I need from that. But, but, anywho. The two things I did finish, very exciting. I did so the first, is the least exciting thing that you've already seen before is my bait pullover from Jacqueline Seaslack. You're like, what are you talking about? But you already finished this. Yeah, I did, okay? But it was ill-fitting. So you know what I did? I fixed my sweater. I fixed it and now it fits way better. I made the neck hole a little bit bigger literally by cutting and sewing the sides. I don't think you can even see it. You can't even see it. Looks great. And then I also literally physically cut off the ribbing on the bottom and picked up stitches and just extended the crop. It was two crop before. If I raised my hands up, I would like flash one boob. Oh my god. I can't I can't do that. You know, I'm a I'm a good good person. I can't just flash people on the streets, you know? So I had to make it a bit longer. And Re so when you finish the sweater, you don't want to like redo the sweater, right? But making it fit you better, I assume, okay, I feel so smug about the fact that I actually took the time to fix my sweaters. I highly recommend this. I assume that the feeling I am currently feeling for fixing a sweater instead of just ignoring the problem, right? Anyways, I assume it's the same feeling that people who get up at like 5 a.m. to run before work have. It's like that feeling, it's like, Oh yeah, I took the time to make my knit actually work for me. Oh yeah, I'm better than all of you. It's a god complex, I swear to god. 
I swear to God, the God, God complex. I'm feeling it. I feel like I'm one smug bastard. And yeah, it fits better now and I'll wear it way more. But I've already talked about this at length. The yarn is Hedgehog Fibers Tweedy, I believe. I hate it. I hate this yarn. I don't know if the Cory Dale Confetti from La Bien Amie is better. I did not like working with this yarn. It feels like plastic, to be honest with you. Uh, and I usually love Hedgehog Fibers stuff. But yeah, the feeling of Superwash just makes me... Gives me the ick now, unfortunately. But the yarn's fun, and I made a gray sweater, so can't stop me now. So that's one. I don't know if I'd recommend this yarn. I like the way it bloomed a lot. I love the way it bloomed. The feeling of it, the feeling of superwash for me now is like not not the one. It's not it. It's not my favorite. But anyways, yes, that was my bay pullover. If you make the bait pullover, I would do lots of fit checks. Just so you know. Okay? Lots of fit checks. The second thing that I had to finish that I absolutely did not want to, to be honest with you, is my dotted ray shawl. This is the first Stephen West pattern I've never made. I wanted an easy, like, road kind of shawl, something to bring me traveling. Uh, that would take up a lot of fingering weight yarn. I wanted to use all of this. Uh, this is Starbath Dyes fingering weight in the colorway Taurus season. Rest in peace, Starbath Dyes. I miss you very much. But you can tell I also took liberties with this. <laughs> you can see where I, the stitch count here. It was all by, by feeling. I did not count stitches. I just said, yeah, yeah. I'll just go as I please. That's whatever. Uh, and I've been enjoying that a lot. It looks pretty good on. The yarn is very soft. It's quite lovely. Ooh. And I've been wearing it like up most of the time. This is why I, need, I know I need a hood because I've been wearing it like this to keep the cold out, you know? It's a merino like applied yarn and fingering weight. And I love the stretch of it. Like it, it's, if it's very bouncy. And a, a shawl feels very classy. I'm not usually a shawl person, uh, but my friends are all making the Aurora Cabin shawl and a make-along, and so I know I'm going to join on, on that. And maybe I'll be a shawl person. I don't think the Dotted Ray shawl was a proper introduction to Stephen West patterns. It's just very, uh, very easy, very plain. And so we'll see how I feel when I do the other one. But yes, I was very fast and loose with my stitch counts here. It still looks great. I don't think anyone who is not a knitter could tell if that it's like kind of fucked up. But it's a really good, stretchy, cute, thick little scarf that I'm going to be wearing all winter long. It's going to keep me cozy. It's a nice one. Yeah. Okay. The next thing I have to show you is my double plump hat by Morale Mokri. I wasn't wearing this today. I might put it on actually. Looks great. But in the last week, I have, there she is. In the last week, I have spun, plied, and knit this baby up. It took one, two, three, four days to do all that. I did not let anything rest. I did not uh, block anything or set any twists. I just said, I want to wear this tomorrow, so I'm going to keep on trucking. The colors are really fun. The fiber was from, it was called, it's called a bullseye bump from London Loop, which is different than Lily Loop, who did the pencil roving. But I got this one at Rhinebeck. And it was a very expensive bump, and it was merino, and I wasn't sure. But the color changing yarn is so stinking fun, I couldn't help myself. I had to do it. So I did it. And double plump, double, double the plump, double the fun, you know? It's a great hat. It's huge. It is comically large and it's very much in my colors. The only thing is that if I fold it properly, then the pink kind of gets lost. But if I fold it improperly, it looks really fun, right? I wish I could show you my pants because my pants match it perfectly. But yes, double plump. I just want something that would take up all the yardage and make a massive hat and I got there and we did that. It was my first time doing a chain ply. 
that's something that's interesting, I guess, is I had never done a chain ply before, so I practiced my chain ply twice. And I'm really happy with the result. I don't know if I would use chain ply if I wasn't trying to keep the integrity of a color shift. I didn't love the way that it... I don't love the way it looks up close. Here, I'll bring it up close for you to see. I don't know if I'm in love with the way... And that might be because I didn't properly, like... I did. I I could have. I could have said the twist. You know, like maybe that's on me. But it almost looks a little cheap, like plasticky almost. Which I know makes no sense whatsoever. I love looking at though. These colors are so me. I'm pretty proud of them. <laughs> I'm pretty proud of these. Uh, and I love wearing it. It's so cozy. It's so warm. I wore it to a craft fair. And I had, like, my mask on, like, my really good mask that was, like, really hot. My really, like, the hat was really hot. And I had my, my really warm sweater on. And I was, it was a human zoo. And I was stressed out. So this is for, like, cold weather only. Which is good. It's good to have a cold weather only hat, right? We all need them. I keep folding it and unfolding it. I keep playing with it because I don't want to put it down. I typically don't work with merino when it comes to spinning. But yes, so I'm going to show you my first attempt at a chain ply, which was this guy. I use it on this art bat. You can tell I haven't washed this one yet, so that it'll it'll relax when it relaxes. But you can totally see that there's some serious over twist happening here. When I take it out, it goes back on itself. Uh, it looks like a knotted mess. Oh my goodness, hey. This was a bat that I got from Died For You. I love, I love their bats. I made some beautiful stuff with their bats before. So I love an art bat. It's such a, such a treat to play with. So yeah, the, that was my first shot at it. I already had this, the single for this spun up and I just wanted to give it a shot. So I went in there, but it is cool. You can't really see where the chaining part of the chain play happens. If you don't know what a chain ply is, it's really interesting. So usually your yarn, it like, it, it's like two pieces that are it's two parallel single spun thing singles that spin into a double or a triple. Quad spin would be a lot, but but a chain ply is essentially it's an exaggerated if you crochet, it's an exaggerated chain. So you pull the loop really far and then it twists and you pull more and you kind of it, it's a very long long loops and they eventually twist onto each other. My second attempt was with some Canadian targi that I I dyed. Targi's a beautifully soft breed. They have a, like, it's a lovely, it feels amazing. Uh, but this one is much better. A lot less over twist. The colors are really pretty too. I'm proud of these colors. I love a pastel moment. But yeah, this is, it almost, I do feel that a chain ply feels a bit like rope, if that makes sense. It's a bit hardier. And maybe that's a three ply in general. I don't usually work with three ply, so I'm not I'm not too sure, but that's that. And then the, my final one was this guy here. And I love it. What a beautiful hat. It's so warm. I'm already I'm like warm. I'm sweating in here. <laughs> oh, I have a mini finished object to show you. I got this really cool uh, mini loom when I was at Rhinebeck. It's I, it was the last one. I really wanted it. I thought it'd be really good for scraps. Just like adding a little something something every once in a while to make a bigger something something eventually. But my first little weaving on it is this guy here. I don't know how to weave, okay? I've never taken a class. I've never even looked anything up. I was just like, I vaguely understand the mechanism of this. I think it's quite, it's quite thick there. But the colors are fun, and it was like a very calming, it's a very calming, non-knitting, non-crocheting, non-spinning thing to do. Just adding another one to my repertoire. You know, I'm just adding more and more. I am an absolute making unit, and I have to catch them all. And so spinning's the next one for me to catch. Eventually I plan on maybe, I have no plans for these. Sometimes making something is just fun. 
this is just fun, okay? All right? This is just fun. That's all this is. Look me in the eyes. I'm not making anything. I'm making no plans. I'm just enjoying myself. It's just me and the vibes, man. Yeah. Pretty colors. I got this at a random booth. The the colorway at a random booth at Ryan Beck. There's like literally children running the booth. They were awesome. <laughs> they did a great job. Okay, yes, those are all the big things. Time for the biggest whip in the whole wide world. The whip of the century. The big mountain I climbed. I call this sweater my Everest, okay? This is my partner pullover, which I completed. So proudly completed. That's the back. This is the front. Before Rhinebeck. This was my Rhinebeck sweater. This was my mountain. I climbed it. I climbed Everest. I completed it in time. I had a deadline. I made the deadline. Isn't it glorious? You can't see the whole thing in its beauty. But there she is right there. Look at her. Look into her eyes. Look at my Everest. My queen. Okay. Several things that made this way harder than it had to be. I decided to, both on the sleeves and on the body, carry the side seam all the way up which meant I had to carry this purple yarn in behind all of this in order to make it to the other side and back again. So I carried a third strand in behind because I'm a goober. I had to make things harder and I did hip shaping. So the hips are shaped on that which means it fits me like a dream, like a beautiful gem uh, but it did take me longer than I had to. The yarn is an amazing Rambouillet that I'm very obsessed with. That is from PEI, Building PEI. Unfortunately, the company has stopped producing yarn. Broke my heart. I went there for the first time in July. And if you're watching that podcast, you can see how like jazzed I am on finding this fiber mill near nearby. And of course, they close the second I find them. Oh, so upsetting. But something else that was hard is that I actually dyed some more purple on top of some pink in order to make it so that I could possibly uh, have enough yardage to finish the sweater. It's a beautifully written pattern. Uh, it's like quite expensive for a reason, you know, like it's worth the money. You can totally see the tension here is so much different than the tension here. I don't know if you can tell. My tension is completely different different needles, different everything. I didn't mean for it to be like this, but it was. Yeah. But yes, I wear it often. I feel I'm very proud of it. I can't believe I finished it. It looks great on me. And the best part was wearing it alongside my buddies who also finished it. So my friends wore, made their Rhinebeck sweaters the same and we got to match and that was awesome. That was so fun. I was like, we're all in uniform. The team is wearing the team chest, the team crest, and we are all, we all look so good. It was really fun too because it was all in everyone's like very obviously their own personality's color. I wouldn't say this is like particularly a me situation. Like this isn't exceptionally who I am in terms of colors. These are very like fall colors to me. This is as folly as I get. You're never gonna catch me knitting brown. Oh my god. But this is pretty close, you know? It's as close as I get. So, uh, but everyone else, like, Annabelle's sweater, it, like, their sweater was very them. It was purple and green, like, literally, and also in their own hand spun. Uh, not the whole thing, I don't think. Or maybe the whole thing, but a good chunk of it. Beautiful sweater. And Natasha also had, like, like pink and, like, a nice cream as well. It's just beautiful. So, yeah, uh, my friends are awesome. I love spending time with them and matching them. Wow, oh my gosh, lucky me. But those are my, that's my everything. As of right now, those are my finished objects. In terms of content I've been consuming, I have been reading, I just finished the Iris Kelly Doesn't Date. It's like the third book in a trilogy of a friend group's, like, just like dykey love stories. They're, I wouldn't say they're like high literature in any sense, but I really enjoy them because they're cute. And I have been reading, oh, I read Shara Wheeler. I kiss Shara Wheeler as well. That was like fine. It was very weird at the end. Very dramatic. Hmm. 
And I've been watching Wheel of Time as as a James recommendation. And it's a really good show. There's some gratuitous violence at the beginning that I was like, whatever, and then it gets better. So it was a great show. And what else? And that might be it. I'm also watching Gilmore Girls always. I it's so comfy. It's so it's so home. And I'm gearing up for the winter season. I am not knitting anyone gifts this year. I said F that. No one's getting gifts. I'm knitting for me. I'm also doing a lot of things to take care of my hands and wrists right now. A lot of stretching, a lot of massaging, a lot of all that good stuff. And I really encourage you to do that as well with your body. Because in this season when things are so cold, things get really tight. And it's really hard. Uh, and if we want to craft forever, we got to take care of our bodies. So... Stretch your wrists, do your stretches, strengthen those wrists, strengthen your hands. It's worth your time. Okay. Well, anyways, that was my podcast. Thanks for watching this far. Wow. Congrats to you. Uh, I love you. I mean that. Okay, bye.